The Assembly will now hear a statement by His Excellency Evo Morales Aima, the constitutional president of the plurinational state of Bolivia. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency? On behalf of the General Assembly, I have great pleasure in welcoming the Constitutional President of the Plurinational State of Bolivia, His Excellency Evo Morales Aima, and I invite him to address the General Assembly. Madam President of the United Nations General Assembly, may I take this opportunity of congratulating you on your election to this very important post. Secretary General of the United Nations, brothers and sisters, heads of state and government, brothers and sisters of delegations, the men, women, and children throughout the world, everywhere in the world, in planet Earth, expect our discussions here to have some actual output, a result improving their lives. The world can see that the leaders meet once a year and they hope that we will faithfully discharge our mandate to build a society that is fairer for everyone. When the United Nations was established after the Second World War, we set forth clear purposes which we can now use uh, to measure our triumphs and our failures the threats and the opportunities. Our purposes at that time were to preserve peace and international security and justice so as to prevent and put an end to threats and in order to put an end to aggression. We also resolved to resolve our disputes by peaceful means we undertook to encourage relations of friendship among all nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination of the peoples. Brothers and sisters, the theme for this session of the General Assembly is making the United Nations relevant to all people global leadership and shared responsibility for peaceful, equitable and sustainable societies. And I would like to take a practical look at the principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations. Member states have an obligation to settle their international disputes by peaceful means so as not to jeopardize international peace or security and not to undermine justice. I would like to take this opportunity of referring to the case submitted by Bolivia to the International Court of Justice, uh, which will be settled next week. This case relates to the obligation for Chile to negotiate with Bolivia in an effective and timely manner to ensure sovereign access for us to the Pacific Ocean. This involves the responsibility of both of our states. We have to find just solutions in the framework of international law. In 2015, the International Court agreed to consider this international dispute whose hemispheric interest was acknowledged by the Organization of American States also. It involves two neighbors 
and regional integration. We really wish to find a good faith solution with Chile and a lasting solution which will be sustainable and which will be mutually satisfactory so that we can put an end to this hundred-year-old dispute between these two neighbours. Our country was deprived of access to the Pacific Ocean and this has had a real negative impact on our human and economic development. Bolivia's call to have access to the sea is involved with our right to enjoy the huge resources of the sea and to take a broader view of the entire planet uh, to enjoy the common heritage of mankind. A human being needs the sea. You cannot have life on land without water and you cannot think of people living without any access to the sea. The sea is not just an outlet for trade or for the market or modern trading. Rather, the sea is a window to other peoples. It is a window to life itself. We hope that the decision that will be taken into the International Court of Justice will be recognized and will help to bring the parties together so that fruitful negotiations can be undertaken. We also hope that we will also enjoy support from the international community because it is very important to have a genuine agreement that looks at the causes and the effects of this dispute which for over 100 years, one whole century, has kept us apart one from the other. One has to take a critical look at inadequate agreements in the past. We want to ensure mutual advantages within the framework of regional and global integration. We want to have these two peoples reconciled. It is quite ridiculous that they have been distanced one from the other for reasons that do not relate to their fraternal desire to coexist. The dispute between Bolivia and Chile over access to the Pacific Ocean is not uh, just a recent political or electoral issue. This dispute goes back to the very beginning of our territorial dispute in the late 19th century when foreign corporate interests that wanted to exploit the natural resources in Atacama were involved. They wanted to exploit guano, saltpeter, silver, copper, and uh, they encouraged an asymmetrical warlike and expansionist approach in the region. So now Bolivia is landlocked and one cannot resolve this matter by invoking inadequate agreements from the past or compromises that did not work. The people of Bolivia have been calling for a solution for over a hundred years, regionally and multilaterally. Bolivia is sure that the decision to be taken by the International Court of Justice, regardless of the scope of that decision, will introduce a new atmosphere in the relationship between Bolivia and Chile uh, so that we can find mutually acceptable and lasting solutions. Our peoples want peace and we have political will and this must be used in order to find possible solutions that will work where both sides will feel they have won rather than having been defeated. Older and more difficult disputes in the world have in fact been resolved through creative and effective diplomacy. 
Bolivia and Chile and their peoples and their governments must await tranquilly a judicial decision, a judgment, which, regardless of the formal aspect of it, will open up a new era of peace, justice and fraternity. The member states of the United Nations should also pay attention to this matter, for this will be a decision by the principal uh, uh, judiciary body which has agreed to consider this dispute and take a decision on it and offer guidelines on a solution. And this would then establish a precedent uh, for fairer societies with shared responsibilities to find solutions to disputes. This is unlike what has happened in the past uh, when uh, warlike approaches and desires to achieve domination prevailed. However, our case is very relevant to the theme of this 73rd session of the General Assembly. Brothers and sisters, we have often drawn this Assembly's attention to the many crises facing mankind and life on Earth. Unfortunately, every year we come to the Assembly to, do, to say that despite many commendable efforts, so many of these crises have gotten even worse and more serious. I would like to talk about the three major threats we face. The first is climate change. Every year it's hotter than it was the year before. Every year there are more harsher uh, phenomena that occur. Every year more human beings are affected irreversibly by hurricanes, by flooding, by droughts, by pollution. Global efforts such as the Paris Agreement are important, but until we tackle the structural causes of this crisis, we will not be able to put a stop to it particularly when the main polluter in the history of the human race, the United States, simply turns its back on science and on multilateralism and thus on the human race. Climate change is an inevitable consequence of capitalism. Overproduction, unsustainable consumption patterns. The planet is being exhausted and life too. The second major threat is the arms race. The culture of war, the possibility of a nuclear disaster is something we all fear. Many leaders, particularly those that have the most weapons, come here to this forum and talk about peace. But at the same time, military expenditures are growing. In 2017, it was 1.1% more than it had been in 2016. Uh, $1,739 trillion. This is 2.2% of the global GDP. The world cannot live like this. Those that feel they have the right to produce and use weapons that can completely eliminate life on Earth are imposing these expenditures and the arms industry feeds off war. Weapons are being tested and they prove to be rather effective in killing children. And then uh, the corporation's shares go up on the stock market. This is a criminal logic and it must be ended. The threat comes from those that are willing to invade countries uh, to indulge in regime change in order to seize the natural resources of other peoples. Military bases are established. Brothers and sisters, the third major threat is inequality. 
Every year, wealth is being concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. In 2017, 82% of the increase in world wealth went to the 1% richest people. Half of the human race saw no increase whatsoever in their income. According to Credit Suisse, 42 individuals hold today the same amount of wealth as 3,700 million people. These figures are simply shameful and we should all be ashamed. This is not a model for distributing wealth, rather it is a model for accumulating wealth and distributing poverty. Brothers and sisters, Bolivia strongly rejects the illegal, inhuman and criminal economic and financial blockade imposed against Cuba by the United States. The United States has an obligation to provide economic reparations for the damage done to the Cuban people, who are heroes. The resolutions of the General Assembly must be implemented, the blockade lifted immediately. Moreover, Guantan Guantanamo should be returned to Cuban sovereignty and there should be no interference in the internal affairs. We have followed closely the progress and difficulties incurred in implementing the peace agreement signed between the government of Colombia and FARC as we have been members of the Security Council. We hope that the new government of Colombia will continue with social and economic reintegration of ex-combatants and will protect the lives of those who have defended human rights and leaders of the peoples. The efforts being made show once again that Latin America and the Caribbean are a peace-loving area, brothers and sister. The sister Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is suffering from outright aggression by the United States and its allies. Latin America strongly rejects attempts to intervene militarily in Venezuela. Venezuelan problems have to be resolved by the Venezuelan people themselves. The United States must immediately withdraw illegal and unilateral steps it has taken which have been, in fact, one of the causes of the economic situation in that country. We take the opportunity to condemn also the criminal Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories. We also condemn the unilateral and illegal decision by the government of the United States declaring Jerusalem the capital of Israel. That decision, in fact, jeopardizes any possibility of achieving a just or lasting peace. We reiterate our support for a two-state solution uh, with a Palestinian state that is free, independent and sovereign, uh, with borders uh, prior to 1967 and with Eastern Jerusalem as its capital. We deeply regret that the war in Syria has led to over half a million deaths in the eight years of that war. That is the result of policy seeking to uh, uh, regime change. It's the result of a policy of intervening in internal affairs and seizing natural resources. Bolivia rejects violations of sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity, which directly or even indirectly are perpetrated by various states, including the United States. It is our hope that the United Nations will do its utmost to achieve a political agreement which will benefit the Syrian people very soon. We appreciate and welcome the efforts being made by Russia, Iran, Turkey and Kazakhstan to put an end to further suffering of the Syrian people. 
brothers and sisters, in concluding, I have to report on, to you on the situation in Bolivia. As you know, we have uh, gotten rid of United States military bases and of U.S. aid and EDI, and uh, we uh, have uh, gotten rid of uh, impositions from the International Monetary Fund. And now Bolivia is an example to the region and to the world. We have one of the fastest growing economies in the region. We have reduced extreme poverty from 37% to 17% in the last 10 years. We've increased uh, life expectancy by eight years. We've reduced infant mortality by 56%. We've reduced chronic infant malnutrition by 50%. Uh, we have invested more money in renewable energies compared to the GDP than any other country. And we are building a society that is fairer, more just. We also have an initiative to combat corruption. And the president and vice president have uh, uh, abandoned any and put an end to any kind of banking secrecy. And we call on all heads of state to support this kind of measure so as to ensure the greatest possible transparency in governance. And this has been achieved thanks to the unity of the Bolivian people and the, our defense of our sovereignty and our recuperation of our natural resources and strategic uh, enterprises, a pluralistic economic model and redistribution of wealth. Brothers and sisters, we confirm our commitment to multilateralism. Together we must build a society with equal opportunity for one and all. We must have a planet that is cared for because it is our only home. We must build a world where justice is possible and peace is with us. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, allow me to thank His Excellency Evo Morales Aima, the Constitutional President of the Plurinational State of Bolivia. I thank him for his statement. May I request representatives to stay, see to stay seated while we escort His Excellency.